For years, illegal miners have been operating with impunity. The owners powerless to intervene as millions of rands worth of minerals are siphoned from their facilities in broad daylight. Until now. McFarlane goes on a ride along with a difference as some of the country's elite crime fighters descend on a massive criminal operation in the Northwest. Here's part one of our action-packed special. Illegal mining is evolving. Forget low-level zamazamas. Think organized syndicates with big money and big machinery. We are speaking about billions of rands of leakage out of our economy. This is just the absolute organized crime. Last year, we reported on opportunistic groups illegally mining in Limpopo. Now, we're honing in on criminal operations in the Northwest province. This exclusive drone footage shows what appears to be a legitimate mining operation, with laborers, excavators, and site tipper trucks running at full steam. But it's not. This is industrial scale pilfering by syndicates posing as legitimate operators, extracting and selling tons of chrome as if they owned the mining rights. In some ways, maybe this is a state capture. Errol Smart is from the Minerals Council, representing the mining industry. We're speaking about entire container ships leaving South Africa full of illegal minerals. The people of South Africa own the minerals. And what's happening is some people are extracting value, but the state doesn't get the royalties, the government doesn't get the taxes. Val de Val heads up private security for the affected Northwest Crow mine. This is hardcore criminals. This is called mine hijacking. They physically hijacked a mine. The chrome is impossible to trace, making it difficult to identify as stolen once it's worked into legitimate markets. The criminals, who are highly organized and have so far managed to avoid arrest, know this. But their days are numbered. An intelligence-driven investigation has been underway for months, drawing in a multidisciplinary team for a next-level takedown that's rarely, if ever, been seen in South Africa. This operation you can't do with normal guarding. This is a specialized operation. That's where you've got the expertise. That's where we've got less red tape. A collaborative investigation built on drone surveillance, vehicle recognition and operations to infiltrate the syndicates and purchase stolen chrome has finally paid off. We used high-tech technology, we used uh, analysing of information, we recruit the right people amongst them where we've identified the four ringleaders. The illegal enterprise has quickly grown and over a few months, as many as 40 excavators have been spotted, leaving a trail of devastation. It's a profitable, illicit business, with this high-grade chrome selling for between 950 and 1,200 rand a tonne. A 32-tonne truck fetches a minimum of 30,000 rand, with at least 35 trucks being filled each day. The syndicates are making well over a million rand a day for chrome they don't actually own. These crimes are committed in secrecy, which means that if it's not stopped, these criminals will continue with impunity. Brigadier Henny Flynn is from the Hawks in the Northwest. These criminals normally regroup and they come back uh, in, in a more strategized and a more organized uh, approach. With no regard for the law, they brazenly carry on in the face of attempts to disrupt their operations. Without the kingpins being nabbed, these efforts are often little more than catch-and-release exercises. It's imperative for us to deal with the whole value chain and not to just address the foot soldiers that are conducting these criminal activities at uh, ground level. We need to deal with the facilitators, the individuals that are behind the procuring and providing of uh, the equipment. By joining forces with private security, Brigadier Flynn has been able to build significant evidence and plan a next-level operation. Numerous uh, individuals were identified to be part of the activities. Maximum people short notice. We need to stay out of the ES and I's cell phone area because one cell phone call in this whole operation is off. 
After weeks of operational planning, it was all systems go and carte blanche got an exclusive opportunity to ride along. So we're at an undisclosed location. I still don't know where we are or where we're going, but the team has been briefed and the targets have been located. The purpose of this mission is to catch those, uh, those operators. The Air Force, the Police Special Task Force, Police Air Wing, the Hawks and Bidvest Protea Coins tactical teams are all key to this elaborate operation. Choppers ready to swoop, armed personnel deployed at the mine and its perimeters ready to trap the crooks while drones monitor the area. So this gives live footage to the Special Force Task Force Commander to execute this operation up to a second. So what are these people doing? It's potential investors. Ah. Well, our focus will definitely be to uh, arrest the mine perpetrators. Then obviously to seize all the equipment that they are using uh, to gather that scrum and to remove it from the affected area. Because of the terrain, we've got nine helicopters. We've got two of the South African Defence Force, four of uh, the South African police, and three of the private sector. Are you optimistic about today? I'm very optimistic. If you look around you with these resources, this is going to be the end of these criminals. These are specialist teams with tactical expertise, usually reserved for high-level operations. Seeing them in action is rare. So we're almost getting ready to go to the illegal mining site. It doesn't happen often in South Africa where you've got all of these three disciplines working together. I think today, the site is going to get closed down. Okay, you guys ready on that side? I'm ready to wrap it up. Copy that. As the choppers move in, Word gets out on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me run. Oh, things are looking bad here, this side. The cell phone video is captured by one of the illegal miners as the operation gets underway. Things are not good here. There's about four choppers this side, the helicopters, Ooh, police. But he has no idea just how bad things are about to get. Before the break, Mac had donned a flak jacket, boarded a chopper and was heading to a secret location. It was the culmination of months of planning. Here's part two of our special report. Large-scale illegal mining syndicates have overrun a chrome mine in the northwest province. But a next-level collaborative bust is underway involving the Police Special Task Force, its Air Wing, the Air Force, the Hawks, and private security air and ground teams. Buckle up, it's about to go down. And we have a front row seat to the action, flying in with Val de Val from Bidvest Protea Coin, who runs the mine security operations. All the helicopters are now gonna be flying at a low level, getting into the right formation, we're getting close to the mine right now. Okay, turning into the target now. The first helicopter that's going to go in is going to be the Oryx from the military. And uh, we're going to be watching how most of them are going to be descending from their oh, helicopter, oh, securing the plane. Oh. Illegal miners scatter, trying to escape arrest. But the teams close in from all directions. Special task force members literally hitting the ground, running. From the air, we spot a Mercedes Benz, identified earlier by the drone operator. The driver is trying to flee. The motorbike races head on towards the vehicle. But the suspect is seen trying to make another run for it. He's trying to get away, he's trying to get away, he's trying to get away, he's trying to get away. But not on this biker's watch. He moves in front of the car, blocking its escape as a police chopper comes in low with backup. 
At the operational command center, teams are being directed to different scenes, all unfolding at once, with troops dropping down from choppers and apprehending suspects. Drivers, buyers and investors are detained. No one is being spared. Back in the air, we see a fortuner trying to make a desperate getaway. The focus of this operation isn't the low-level workers. The main goal is to nab the ringleaders, the money men funding the illegal mining and the buyers fueling the demand. The police are giving chase in an unmarked vehicle, while air support comes in to give backup. The driver fires shots at the cops. But in a spectacular effort from the ground team and two support choppers, the car is brought to a halt in the middle of an informal settlement next to the mine. Copy that, you arrested the fortuner, copy that. The teams are cleaning up fast, apprehending suspects all over the mine, even the ones fleeing on foot. There they are, there they are, the two. Remember one was wearing a red shirt, there they are, there they are. This suspect jumps the fence thinking he's in the clear, but his freedom will be short-lived. But I don't understand why he just doesn't give up because he's surrounded by three cage helicopters, people on the ground, police on the ground, as well as the army. And he's just one man, and I don't know what he's running for. We've got a visual. Oh man, what a rush. As you can see from the aerial view, there's cars, there's excavators. This is now an active crime scene. The suspects are facing possible fines and even jail time because of the scale of the unlawful activity. With millions of rands worth of equipment scattered across the target area, the Hawks comb the mine, securing evidence. Many of the drivers simply abandon trucks full of chrome or leave excavators standing in deep cavities. Yeah, and here's the cell phone. Actually, it's too late. But this isn't going to deter the cops. They're calling technicians to assist in moving these exhibits off site to a secure holding area. Thinking the scene has been contained, we're surprised to hear an excavator starting up. So this guy over here thought he could get away. He waited for everyone to go and wanted to take the excavator quickly and escape with it, but they've caught him as well. Well over 100 million rands worth of equipment is seized. 11 trucks, two diesel tankers, four private vehicles, at least 20 excavators and illegally mined chrome valued at more than 2 million rand are confiscated. Not bad for a day's work. So, Brigadier, good day at the office. Happy with how it played out? Yeah, we are happy. We mm -hmm. are happy, Mac. Uh, I think we've done uh, exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. The operation was executed according to plan. Mm -hmm. Would you say you'd like to do more operations like this? Well, uh, in an ideal situation, most definitely, because mm -hmm. uh, it has its value in terms of neutralizing the threat. Two of the main kingpins have been arrested, while a number of foot soldiers are now witnesses. And as the dust settles on the illegal mining area, there's a sense of optimism in the air. It was a beauty to watch and almost like a rugby game, each one passing the ball to the next as we were going down, grabbing the guys, taking them through. Is this what needs to happen for us to maybe get a hold on crime in this country? This is exactly what needs to happen going forward. And this is the beginning. This is the icebreaker for fighting crime going forward for this country. Well, slanity, slanity. <laughs> Yeah.
You saw him directing operations from a chopper, and we're delighted to be joined in the studio now by the brains behind the mission, Val de Val, the COO of Bitvest Protea Coin. Now, Val, viewers must be thinking about two things or alarmed by two things, the scale of the operation and how brazen it was. Are there other large-scale operations like this around the country? Definitely, uh, Derek. Uh, more than enough to be concerned about. Uh, for instance, we in the Free State, we've got an operation for more than a year now, which aren't a covert operation, it's an overt operation, so I can talk about it, Project Knockout, which is a joint venture between Bitwest Protea Coin, the Mine Harmony, and the South African Police of uh, the Free State. Uh, and various other provinces, we've got similar operations. How long does it take for your team to gather the information that is going to get convictions in the end? Because it's fine to go in there, you know, guns blazing, but you have to get the convictions, especially of the ringleaders. That's, that's what, it's, what it's about. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of factors that, that plays a role that you haven't got control over. You would love to, to uh, finish that in, in a short possible time, but it's just yeah. uh, because obviously there's a, there's a loss from, from the client side. Uh, but obviously those factors, uh, natural disasters, the terrain's playing a, a huge role, uh, weather's playing a role, health, uh, people might be sick, they lie in bed, uh, COVID. Yeah. Uh, so so that's, that's a huge uh, influence on, on the time span. And also, uh, it depends on how sophisticated uh, that specific syndicate is. Great to see some of our own forces being uh, portrayed in a good light. And it was like watching an action movie. But how do you keep the covers on this with so many people involved? Yeah, if I can just give you a, 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 a bit of, of, of behind the scenes. You know, we had uh, 20 Bitwest Protea coin people. We had 40 task forces They're coming from Durban, coming from Cape Town. Uh, we had three uh, provinces, helicopters, police uh, helicopters there, nine helicopters, uh, motorbike squad. We had the yeah. Tom's team, uh, 20 people from head office, Hawks, Tom's undercover vehicles. So it's a huge uh, amount of people assisting us there. And, uh, uh, to, and, and the need to know basis, you, you need yeah. to apply that, that element for, right from the beginning. You know, we've, for two and a half months, we haven't met uh, in once, we haven't met in, in a police office. We did that outside police uh, environment. Uh, when we uh, uh, went to the, the, the scene, um, you'll see that we, we used the private sector radios. We didn't use the radios of the, the police. We sneaked in the helicopters different times to a, a place unknown to most of the people. We found the network to make sure that the tower we're working on is 100% correct. We made sure there's batteries in the tower in case of emergency uh, load shedding. Uh, so those are all things you need to consider. We had a medical team on standby. We had an incident where we needed to assist people. We had a medical uh, uh, representative in the chopper and he could assist him within seconds. Val, all I can say is uh, congratulations to all the teams involved and may there be many more uh, like this. I thank you. And may you get the culprits and get them to book. I hope so, and that's where we're aiming at. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.